Concussion refers to a range of signs that people exhibit and symptoms that they complain of after an impact. There are a range of symptoms that people can describe. They may have a headache or dizziness, a feeling of being in a fog. Sometimes it's just not being right. There are auditory and hearing disturbances, visual disturbances, and in extreme cases, they may not know where they are or what has happened to them. Right down at the cellular level, it's the transmission of messages from one nerve cell to the other within that complex neck top processor that's not going quite right. We think this disturbance comes down to the cells themselves not having enough energy. And that comes about after there is a contraction of the blood supply. Not enough blood, not enough oxygen getting to the individual cells so they don't perform as well as they should. When we think about concussion, we always think about impacts directly to the head, but it doesn't have to be. Anything that transmits force through to the brain, such as an impact or a tackle to the body in our football sports, can also cause concussion. We typically think of concussion in terms of high impact or contact sports. Right at the top of that list are equestrian sports. Now the incidence of that is about 30 per 1,000 participants. In other sports like football, it's around 10 per 1,000. But it's not just the big hits. You don't have to be knocked out. In fact, less than 10% of concussions have people knocked out. The key to dealing with concussion is to recognize that it may have occurred. After that, it's easy. You remove them from play. You don't let them go back to play. And not just a game, but it can be practice as well. We think about the sports we see on TV every day as having high impact and therefore concussion is likely. But we also need to worry about it in our community sports and particularly in our schools. So children and adolescents are more likely to suffer concussion, mainly because their brains are still developing. Their symptoms may be more prolonged and may be more severe. Girls are more affected than boys and women more so than men. So there's a genetic predisposition. To prevent concussion, we have to look after the brain. So some people think the answer is to put it in a hard case or a helmet. That works in preventing fractures of the skull and bleeding inside the skull, but it's never been shown to help in concussion. Soft headgear, on the other hand, has not to date been shown to do anything other than protect against superficial cuts and abrasion and cauliflower ears from repeated bruising. We're now starting to see headgear come through where research is showing that the material of the headgear actually decreases the amount of impact going through to the brain, and therefore it protects against concussion. At the University of Sydney, our research is geared around learning more about what's going on in our sporting field so we can protect against concussion. So we are looking at defining how large the forces are, how much rotation's involved, because if we can monitor it, we can manage it. And we're looking at doing that with biosensors, with electronic devices on the skin or in a mouth guard that tell us what's going on. We're also looking at more accurate diagnosis. We really need to understand what's going on right down the, at the level of the brain, the level of the cells, those individual nerve cells talking to the ones next to them. And that's a really exciting place for our research at the moment because we're starting to understand what that process is all about and being able to demonstrate it so we can make accurate decisions both on the sideline about taking a player from the field and when they're recovered to know that they're safe to go back to their sport.